So today we are going to be talking about the 90 day sales funnel. And this is all about how to multiply and automate your coaching business. So my name is Ashley Shaw for those of you guys that I haven't met yet. And I'll tell you a little bit about how this all came into play. So I, what I actually do is I help fitness coaches eliminate the overwhelm in their marketing efforts so that they can really have the business of their dreams. Because I believe that when we take off the table, what overwhelms us and what we're not actually really great at, and we can focus all our energy into our strengths, I really feel that that's where we can become in the top 1% of our business and of the company. I really think that um, what they teach us in school about focus on your weaknesses and really hone in on these and, and try to get good at them is actually a waste of our genius. And if you guys have read the book Strengths Finder or Now Discover Your Strengths um, by Mar Marcus Buckingham, then you may also agree with this principle that if we can just focus our mindset on, okay, if I do what I, no one else in the world can repeat of me, then everything else in my business, I can really start to automate. And that's how I really start to um, multiply and really exponentially grow what I'm good at. So that's what I really believe in what I do and, and what I teach every other, um, you know, uh, diamond star coach that I, that I work with. And so what I actually do and how I came to work with Bria is I was working as the president of a fitness company out in British Columbia. Uh, we had eight clubs within our um, region and I was overseeing the island. And Bria and I got to talking and I, uh, I had a blog. I'm an English literature, um, like I did English literature as my degree in school and a women's studies degree. And I had this little blog and I wanted to interview Bria. Bria and I went to high school together. And she got talking about um, what she does, and I was sharing this with all my uh, reader, readership at the time, and I just remember thinking, I don't know how we can work together, Bria, but there's got to be something that will like, come together. And it was about six months later that I developed, um, I was teaching Bria about these things I was learning about ideal customers and how to really make sure that you're talking to the right people and picturing that person right across the table from you because that's how you can really cut the noise. And I started teaching Bria all of these concepts and she was like, if you could just roll this up and make it into a course for my team, I would love you forever. And that's really how our relationship started is Bria just started telling me what she needed and me being this teacher at heart, I've always taught well in the fitness industry on the sales side, on the leadership side. I just started creating content for her teams to consume and really help take down the marketing overwhelm. And so my whole career in the fitness industry has been live and online training presentations, just like I'm doing for you guys today. I've taught over a million students in class and on, uh, online. And at 14 years of age is when I started my first business. I started a Hello Kitty business in my parents' home decor store. Um, and that's when I really knew that entrepreneurship was for me. I really never wanted to have to report to anyone. My parents were entrepreneurs. I took uh, 15 years and I worked in corporate. Um, most of my 20s got all the corporate that I'll ever need for a lifetime and then decided that I want to do this full time and I want to help take down the overwhelm for fitness coaches online and really help them automate their business, take the overwhelm out of the marketing. So this is something that I always teach in my courses. And the reason I want to share this with you guys today is I think it's really important not only for you guys to realize what your sweet spot is as a coach, um, but also to teach your coaches to do the same. Because I think when we start off in any sort of business, especially online, you can feel like you're in the sea of sameness. You can feel like there's so many other fitness coaches out there that are just like me. I'm not maybe as, you know, all the doubts that go through our mind. I'm not um, as smart as the other, the other ones out there. Maybe I don't have the marketing experience. Maybe I'm not as fit as I want to be. Maybe I don't feel like I can teach them everything that they need to hear to want to wanna work with me. And I really think that when your coaches can all nail this for themselves, I'm telling you, when this happened for me, I was like, nothing will stop me. I will leave my corporate job. I will replace my income and nothing can stop me. And all of a sudden, this confidence that I've never had before, like I was waking up, I remember at like four in the morning, I'm not usually that much of a morning person. And I was just getting it done because I knew the vision that was really driving me. So if you can impress upon not only yourself, you really know what these things are for you, but then you can pass this along to your team. 
amazing things will happen. Like that motivation that maybe you're seeking or that your team is seeking will all of a sudden like come to fruition in no time. So what you're born to do for me, I was born into the fitness industry. Like legitimately my parents had a gold's gym in the eighties. My mom went into contractions in the parking lot. Like it was like, meant to be like that I would work in the fitness industry. So I've always been around. Um, yeah, my mom was an aerobics instructor. My dad was a bodybuilder. It was just part of my DNA. Um, and what I love to do is my parents were always entrepreneurial. So that is a part of um, my experience of what I really want to do. I always wanted to be uh, someone that had the freedom to travel. My parents were traveling four to six times a year and they had four kids. Um, so it was amazing to see the sort of lifestyle we had as because they were entrepreneurs and vacation was never denied. Like I remember my parents took me to Australia for six weeks when I was in grade one and it was like, you know, you don't really, um, know how special that is until you grow up and you're like, wow, that is amazing that they were able to do that. So I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and a freedom seeker. And what I love to do is I love learning, taking complicated concepts and simplifying it. I could just slap people that make things too complicated. And so I am a sucker for simplicity. I will take complicated courses, digest them. And I think this might be my English background, like pray them, dissect them down until it's only the pure essence of what actually matters. Because I think when you can take something to its purest form, just understand what are the action steps you can execute because overwhelm is the enemy of execution. So that's what I love to do is take marketing concepts, understand what's working from the experts and simplify it into a step-by-step day-by-day course for fitness coaches to implement. And my skills and education come in two places. Um, I'm an English literature major, so writing is my jam. I love writing posts, social media, really hitting like things like at the heart, at that emotional level with my posts. That's really important when I'm putting stuff out there. But then also, um, my education comes from an online marketing world. So my husband and I moved to Vietnam uh, 10 years ago. And we, we went there to set up a business, uh, to teach English and to start exporting products. And so we had to figure all this stuff out. Um, he was really the genius behind all the, I didn't even understand that you could put products online, live, the, live in a different country and sell them. But he really paved the way for us to have this sort of lifestyle that we could do what we loved. And it was just a matter of finding the right passion to put in front of us. So I think that hopefully in explaining that, that's where my magic lies, right in the middle of that is what I am really great at and what I can offer anyone that works with me. And I think that when fitness coaches can really hone in on what this is for them, no one can touch them. Like all of a sudden, competition just dissipates and you feel more, um, just you really know why you're put on this earth and how you can help others. And I think that's so important for your people to feel good about themselves because people that feel good about themselves always produce results. So that's what the sweet spot is. And that's why I think that's so important. So next I wanna jump into the common challenges that you guys may be facing um, when you're a top tier coach and when you wanna rapidly grow your business. Um, I've heard this many times before, um, but specifically in a lot of conversations with Bria, um, she's talked to me about what has sort of happened in her business, how in the beginning, it's sort of easy, right? Like you have all these untapped resources, all these connections, and then all of a sudden, you get really good at, um, you know, following up with those people and doing all the processes, um, posting like what it used to be, right? Three to five times a day on Facebook, and then something changes, and the old ways don't work anymore. So the common um, things that can happen is the OG, the old gangster method of having Facebook friends uh, doesn't work anymore. And you need something that's more automated that can help you get more people in the funnel on a quicker basis instead of this like manual labor of step-by-step -step adding person by person. And then maybe you felt I built a very successful business, um, but things have changed and I'm not sure how to take my success and what I've done because I built my business, you know, two to three to five to six years ago, how do I get my team to replicate it when the systems have changed? Things are not the same anymore. Um, maybe you need more fresh leads um, and you want them on autopilot because you chasing down leads, I'm going to guess for 99% of you, 
is not your sweet spot. Like that's not what you need to do in your business. In order to push your business forward, my guess is that you need to be helping to craft the message and help to convert the clients, right? And, and help retain them. So once you have them in your funnel, you can convert them, but you need something on autopilot to bring those people in and keep moving them down the funnel. And lastly, maybe you can attract customers, but retaining them with Shakeology, which we know is the most important piece of this, is really the challenging part. Because once you have people on board, um, I remember this with fitness memberships when we were selling people, it was like this constant drive to sell memberships, sell memberships. And yet at the same time, the, the revenue that was coming in when we could maintain that customer base, which you already have those people in the door, now you just have to uphold your promise. So that is the piece that I think um, we drop the ball on because sometimes not as many of those tools may be in place and we don't really know how to put those in place to make sure that we keep our people. So all of those things may be playing on your mind. And this is really where, um, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with Bria side by side, we've really come up with this solution to help tackle all of those issues and take this process and really put it on autopilot for you. So the idea, I'm sure you guys have all heard of a sales funnel before, but I want to talk about this process of, of what happens. So you have your attraction, you're attracting your ideal customers into your funnel. And the funnel is always the biggest at the top, right? When people become aware of you, that's where the most people are going to drop into your funnel. And then as they go through these stages of they first become aware of you, usually this is through your social media posts you know, like Instagram, Facebook stories, that sort of idea. And when you start accelerating, that's going to be through Facebook ads. Then there's interest that's developed in who you are and you may invite them into a Facebook um, group that you have a free community that you run. Then you're going to have them go through a decision making process. If they want to work with you. Um, this is also where your email strategy comes in with interest and in helping them make a decision. Um, and then as well as taking action, which is decision and action also have that um, implementation of Facebook ads as well to help push them down the funnel. So what happens is as someone goes into your funnel, it does taper down, meaning people will self-select that they're not ready to take action. But our job is to make sure that you have the most quality people dropping into the funnel um, so that your, your net is out there, you're catching those right people. And then once we get them, yeah, cool, they've seen a Facebook post, they're now aware of you, but it's a wasted effort if you're not pushing them down the funnel. And we do that with the tools such as your uh, free groups, your email marketing series, and your Facebook ads. Like the, I'm sure you guys already know this, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but we know that Facebook posts if you're not promoting them, the delivery rate is about 2%, two to 6%. Now, when you start adding in these other metrics, like your Facebook advertising, as well as your email uh, series and driving emails, email open rate is 28%. So you've just jumped, and this is free, right? Email marketing is free. You've jumped from a 2% delivery rate to a 28% delivery rate just by starting to send emails. Then you add your Facebook advertising into that, and all of a sudden, um, you can see why with algorithm changes and that sort of idea, it's become harder to get your business going and fill the funnel. But with these additional tools added in, all of a sudden, it becomes much easier to control every step of the process. And then on the other side, when your person takes action, we want to make sure that they don't just take action and fall off. They're also, as you get more into building your funnels, there's going to be another system for retaining your customers and turning them into coaches, right? And this can all be done through the same automated process of having a funnel support that. So before I jump in any further, because I know this might be either blowing your guy's mind, like Ashley Shaw, slow the truck down, or it might be Ashley Shaw, you're preaching to the choir. I totally get what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. So is anyone confused at this point or can I get a thumbs up if you guys are totally good with this? Yes, because you're such rock stars. Okay, cool. We're gonna dive in even deeper. Okay, so now that we understand and are all on the same page with the funnel, the most efficient approach to converting leads is to build a process that automati auto automatically brands you, supplies worth to your prospects, follows up with them and sorts out the uninterested people. 
This is what a funnel does for you. It's the most efficient approach to converting your leads, taking them from the top, giving them the work they need to take action. So what I've created is something called the 90 day sales funnel. And a lot of this stuff you guys are already going to be doing. Some of this stuff is going to be new, but I want you guys to look at this as a two prong approach. The first layer is you're going to ask yourself, am I following these steps effectively? And either you're going to check it off or, or have, you know, your action plan of, okay, this is what I need to do consistently. This is my next step. The next thing I want you guys to think about is if I think about my team, how consistent are they with this? Because one action item might sit with you. Like I need to get my blank set up consistently, my email marketing or Facebook ads or whatever it may be. But my team, this is where we need to move the needle for them because obviously the more they move the needle, the more it moves the needle in your business. So step one of your 90 day sales funnel and why I've chosen 90 days. I'm sure this already makes sense to you guys, but with the beach body world, everything is run on a 90 day cycle. So as soon as we start the ultimate uh, portion fix, we have 90 days before we are converting into the next program. So that's why this, these sales funnels are always 90 days. So step one is that you have your fitness coach. They are posting on Facebook and Instagram. So they are doing that consistently. They're getting it done. Check mark, right? Very basic, easy stuff. That is the first part of your funnel. Now, I think we can all agree that um, when you get new coaches, sometimes it's challenging for them to know what to say, what to do, that sort of idea. So after I go through the skeleton of this process, I'm going to talk to you guys about booster options, like options that um, are some solutions for your team if they struggle with those little bits. Because I know new coaches, it's a little bit more challenging. So, But that's step one. Once they nail that, it's like, okay, you can pass step two, uh, pass on to next, the next step, step two. Step two is about the stories, right? Um, there's a ton of talk, obviously, about Instagram stories. Mark Zuckerberg talking about how um, video format and stories is going to surpass all other forms of marketing. So this is a really important um, benchmark and where we're going. So Facebook and Insta stories, step number two, making sure that your uh, Facebook and Insta stories are up and running and that they're done consistently using the Redick formula. So this is a formula um, that Chanel Johnson talks about um, where every day you have your uh, five posts. So the first one is make it something relatable. So you could just be talking about like, if you think about your ideal customer, sometimes what <laughs> it's hard to take off the fitness hat, fitness coach hat for a second and think, do my ideal customers all like work out right now? Do they all drink shakes every day? Like really just being clear, like, do they do those things? Because if that's relatable, cool blender exposure explosion like post that but it might not be so it's important to just know who you're talking to and where they're at in their journey so the first part is make it relatable next you're going to do a little clip on educating or motivating next is dialogue so you're going to ask for comments like ask them a question and ask your audience to engage um, next is to interact so that's a poll a yes or no question lastly is capture you always want to be capturing, asking them to DM you um, to get something. Maybe it's a recipe, maybe it's a free workout, maybe it's clean week, whatever it may be. That helps drive the algorithm so that your stories are shown uh, to more people. So that's really important in this process. So step one, we have Facebook and Insta posting. Step two is all about stories. Then we move into step three. Once these two things are being done consistently, we need a Facebook community. Here's why. When someone gets into your Facebook community, Number one, we ask for an email address. Always, always, always. This is a very easy way to grab that email address and uh, to start owning that information. Here's a problem. If you're just playing on Facebook and Instagram, you don't own that information. And I'm sure that um, you guys have heard stories before of accounts getting shut down. Just weird things happening out there or your posts not being shown to people anymore. So this is where getting an email address is so important. So to get into your community, they give you their email address. And then in your community, this is really how, like the first stage here with posting is like, you're flirting, right? Like you're showing, oh, I'm a mom. I'm into these things. I, you know, like I play roller derby. I like to, you know, eat superfoods, like whatever your jam is. That's how you're flirting on the outside. When they get in the community, this is like you're dating now. I want to show you my value. I want to add consi my, um, consistent uh, talk about my mission, how I add value. 
And these are all going to be um, in your Facebook group and you're building that likability and trust so that this person is deciding, yeah, I'm in a dating phase really with this fitness coach. I don't want to, I want to be exclusive with them. I don't need another fitness coach. I think she's got what I want. So we stay committed in the Facebook community. Then once we have them in the community, then we work, we're also, um, we have an email series that we're building. So maybe you guys already have a lead magnet. Um, maybe you don't. Lead magnets are really, if you um, don't have them, they're not as scary as they may sound. There's some really easy websites to set up a quiz. Um, those are what I find always works best. Like the lowest cost per capture um, is quizzes. Like uh, it, it can be like 10 cents um, for someone to see that page. So um, it, you know, then obviously like, do they put in their email? That's like another um, metric that you're always working to get down that sort of idea. But if you, when you set up a lead magnet, like a quiz and they get the results in exchange for an email, this is what also is helping drive your email series. So you're obviously uh, with your email series, you can start with your current um, customer list that you have. When you're launching something new, you would obviously have to take out like if, for example, let's say you're, you were doing a final call for Transform 20, you wouldn't want to send the same email to everyone that has already started with Transform 20. But the, it's just about this consistency of weekly emails to drive trust, overcome objections that these um, customers are thinking about like, Oh, I can't commit to that. Like I can't work out an hour a day. Like that's where these little, like call them like seeds that you plant along the way in your emails. Like I never thought I could get a workout in 20 minutes either. Like these sort of things, you are starting to plant these seeds in your email series so that you're providing solutions and your customers are becoming more and more aware of them. So they're going to see you in the Facebook community. Then they're going to get this little email from you and it's building up this story of trust and likability and them really being interested and then pushing them to sort of make a decision, right? Next, we move into step five. Once your email series is running consistently, you're sending an email a week. People are not like surprised when they see an email from you. It's like very consistent. Then you're going to move into Facebook ads. What I hear the most often from people is that they're like, ah, I tried Facebook ads. It didn't work. I'm like, okay, I get that. It is, it can be really frustrating to try Facebook ads and be like, ah, that was a waste of money. Here's where most people make mistakes here, or they're just unaware. Um, there is something that you can do to put a pixel on, um, your website, or if you don't have a website, like a landing page. And what that does is it tracks everyone that visits that page. That data is actually more important than any other piece of data with your Facebook ads because you can retarget those people. We know that in marketing, it takes someone six times to see something to take action. So that's where your Facebook ad campaigns are really important. And usually you would always have two Facebook ad campaigns set up. One is always going to be filling the top of the funnel, that awareness phase, right? You can take your customer list, we can create a lookalike audience, and we're filling that funnel so people are being introduced to you. I always use my lead magnet. I always use a quiz to introduce people to me. That's what's constantly filling my funnel. And then the next part of your Facebook ad um, series that's running at all times as well is to retarget those that haven't actually taken action. So anyone, for example, that visits my quiz page, I have a pixel there so I can follow up with them and remind them which, which um, courses or things are closing. So same with you guys, you always want to be reminding people like, oh, like Transform 20 waiting list is, is being shut down. There's no room for um, anyone else to, to jump on like final day, that sort of idea. So that is a little bit of an overview of how the funnel works. I just want to make sure we don't have any questions. Is everyone okay? Anyone have a question? No? Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure I saw a little pop up here. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. had a question about the quizzes. Like, yeah. what do you, what are the quizzes? Like, what are you, so, you those or whatever? So there's a, um, a website called Interact. Um, and that one, like, I find the more basic stuff, the better. So like, for me, the types of quizzes I do is like, you know, what kind of fitness coach are you? Like, what kind of mama are you? What's the best workout for you? It's basic stuff that people are like, oh, like, I really want to know what kind of mama I am or what kind of, you know, like, um, time efficiency junkie that I am. So it's those questions that I think it, you don't have to work out to answer it. Those are probably the best type of ones. So whatever your target, 
that's what you're going to focus in on. But Interact is the uh, website that I've, that's free that you can use for quizzes. Yeah, cool. Okay, awesome. So next we're going to move into uh, your Facebook ads, how this um, actually fuels your sales machine. Because sometimes I think with Facebook ads and email marketing, we can expect that, okay, I'm going to turn on Facebook ads and all of a sudden all these sales are going to start coming, coming through. And I should just see it like that. That's how I know if my ads are working. And that is really not the case. Facebook ads really serve to just fuel your sales machine. So what I mean by that is that we know the funnel consists of awareness, interest, consideration, intent, and then they move into a sale. So what happens is in this upper awareness phase, typically people would just see your social media posts. Then they sort of become aware of you. What you want to do is you want to use Facebook ads so that more people become aware of you. And that first Facebook ad is like a value ad or a quiz ad. Like it's not buy my product. Like they don't even know you. They're not going to pull out the credit card for you, right? It's just a basic like here's value. It could be a video, something that shows you're an expert. Could be a quiz. All those ideas work. You could like use your lead magnet there and gather an email all at the same time. So once your Facebook ad, um, let's say you're using that, is out there, people are in that awareness phase. They've now seen you on social media. They know who you are. They may become interested and then join your group, your free community, where you're, you'll get their email. The other way, obviously, to get an email if you really don't want to run a free group is through that lead magnet. But we need an email. That commits them in the process, brings them from I'm flirting to now I'm I'm, I, I want to get value from you. Like we're moving to the next stage of this dating process. Then once you have their email, uh, you're going to start emailing them, right? That's when your email series really starts. And through these emails, you're going to be showing them value. You're going to be telling them stories. You're going to be building likability. Um, you're going to be doing all these things along the way to really help them move to, I don't know who this person is on the internet to, huh, I kind of like Ashley, like, I like that she's really real, like she doesn't, you know, she, she just tells it like it is, like her emails are funny, like I'm going to keep opening them and seeing what she has to say, because she puts out a lot of good stuff, like I like her shopping list, I like her quick like workout tips, I'm going to keep opening her emails. And then as they are moving down through that um, interest and, and consideration phase, um, you will also, uh, when you have a product launch coming up, that's where your email and Facebook ads will work in conjunction. So leading up to a launch, there's all these um, different email strategies that you can have um, where I usually use a four-part email series leading up to a launch. So it'll have, um, it's called a challenge email, which we are just challenging a limiting belief. So if someone says, I don't have time, that email is going to focus on why 20 minutes is enough in the case of uh, Transform 20. Um, next, we're gonna move into what's called an expand email. So it's like once you remove that limiting belief that you need, to, you need longer than 20 minutes for a workout, what are the possibilities that actually happen? Because when people start realizing they don't need more than 20 minutes to work out, they can actually work out most days, like six days a week. It's easy, right? It's only 20 minutes. Then we move into a frequently asked questions or testimonial email where we really provide and pull back um, all the stops, we really tell them why other people have been successful and why they will be successful. Then we have a final call to action email. So that is a four part series I always end a product launch with, as well as at the same time, anyone that has interacted at the beginning, at the top of the funnel with your Facebook ad, you have this pixel, you've been tracking them, you will retarget just those people. So the budget's small, like five bucks a day. You're going to retarget those people so that they see that the product launch is closing and that they need to get on board. So all those things, and then of course your social media posts, all those things are adding together for a huge end to every launch that you have. So I'm sure if you're, you know, thinking about, okay, this is what I'm currently doing. You add in these extra layers of, I need an email series. I'm going to dabble in Facebook marketing, that sort of idea. You can see how there's way more points of contact that these potential customers are going to see you. And it's not a spray and pray method. I think how Facebook ads maybe used to be where people would be like, oh, I'm just going to promote my like page and, and that sort of idea where that doesn't convert people. It doesn't push them down your funnel towards leading them to a sale. 
So from that funnel, this is a, a deeper approach. So I was at, uh, Bria invited me to her retreat in Arizona. And this was something that her and I really put together for her team as a launch strategy. So we took the 90 day calendar and we said, okay, so we're going to make this really easy for her team to understand because it's one thing for Bria to be executing on all cylinders. Like obviously if you guys are on this call, you're a leader of a certain level that you don't need that push. Like you're doing your thing, you're executing on, on all cylinders. Um, but what is, could be missing is how is your team executing? So this really served to help Bria's team understand, okay, let's take out the overwhelm here. What do you need to post every day? Here are your themes. What do you need to post on your Facebook and Instagram and your Instagram stories using that reject formula that we were talking about? Then we talked about what needs to go in your Facebook community, um, as well as what needs to be emailed out to your email list. And then we talked to them just very, very high level at this point. Um, like we got, uh, we worked together on her emails that were going to go out um, for her coaches. And then I have a Facebook ad mentorship running um, with uh, people from her team where I'm walking them through how to set up their ads. But this is how you take that funnel and you lay it out. So it's really easy for a fitness coach to know, okay, I got to start with these first two columns. Okay. Now I can add the third. Now I can add the fourth. So it's like adding a column in order to scale up your business. And then of course this template's great. I like it because um, like your team call topics, if you're running a call every week, you can really tie in. Okay. I know if this week, um, you know, in our email series, we're going to be talking about uh, answering a frequently asked question. I can tie that back to my team call and maybe how messaging that week is going to be um, a little bit different, how we're going to talk about some strategies that way. So this becomes more of a, not just a spray and pray. This is like a legit, like 90 day strategy so that nobody is floundering in what do I do? What do I post? And, and what do I send out? So we really um, got whoops, really clear on those steps in the process and what was happening in the emails as well as her Facebook, like Facebook ads. And they had the option to work with me um, in that mentorship if they wanted to.